On today's video, we're checking out a brand new 2024 driver on the budget end of the spectrum. So for all of you folks who love to save money on your golf gear and you still want it new, this could be a really good option. This is the Tour Edge Hot Launch C524. The 24 here is for 2024. This is their latest driver. Now this year, Tour Edge Exotics, which you've seen me really fall in love with on this channel, did not release a driver, but they did release one in their sister brand, Tour Edge. This is the more budget side of the company, and we're gonna find out if we get budget results or if we get high-end results out here on course. Now, the one thing that's really promising about this driver is that they've actually taken tech from the Tour Edge Exotics line, the higher priced line, their premium line, and built it in to this new Hot Launch 524. You can see this ridge running through the middle. They call that Ridgeback technology. It gives it more stability, and it's gonna create higher MOI especially with that weight back there at the end of the club in the middle there, you can see the Ridgeback designation there. Now, the other thing about this that's not written on the face itself, but is part of this technology, again, that carried over from Tour Edge Exotics is that this has diamond face technology and this face has variable thickness. Those two features, very premium for a driver that only costs $249. Now, when you do have a budget driver, there are gonna be a few things that are, of course, going to be cost-saving measures. For instance, this is not an adjustable hosel. No adjustment there. And I've got a nine-degree driver, which actually is not the best setup for me generally. I'm a 10.5-degree driver man, so I'm a little worried this is going to launch a little low, but we'll find out on the course. The shaft itself is going to be a little bit more towards the budget side. This is an Ascent from Aldea. It's 55 gram stiff flex. It's a good-looking shaft, I will say that. There's not gonna be a lot of shaft options either. This is gonna be your main basic option on this series. So those are a couple things that you're always gonna give up with a budget product. You're gonna give up a little bit of customizability and adjustability, but will this thing still perform? That's what we're out here to find out. Let's do it next. All right, first test here. As you can see, it's very early in the morning. That means there's a lot of dew on the ground and it's really cold down here. For Florida, this is might as well be freezing. It's 48 degrees. So I'm not expecting that we're gonna hit 275, 280, anything like that. I'm hoping for about 255. That would be a really good number with a driver at this time of day. Let's see what we do. Now I'll be using the Garmin G80 here to give us some shot data as well as measure our shots because we want to know exactly how far these things fly. I love this little device. You can get one for yourself at playbetter.com. Our sponsors for the last four years running absolutely love their service, their prices. For all your technology needs, whether it's GPS watches, range finders, launch monitors, and simulators, playbetter.com is the place to buy it. I've got a link down below. First shot here, let's see what we do. Now looking down at it, a little bit of a draw face to it. Oh, wow. Tell you what, the sound and feel at impact is really good very premium for a driver that costs $249. I would not have guessed that. In fact, the sound and feel may even be better, believe it or not, than the Tour Edge Exotics. Now, I caught that one pretty darn well in the middle. We'll see how it fares from other parts of the face, but that was really nice feeling and sounding. Stats there, club head speed was 101. The ball speed was 146, and the smash was 1.45. That's a pretty good number. Our estimated carry was 235. We'll see where it finished, like I said, in this dew and cold morning, but pretty good start. Shot two. Oh my goodness. That does not look like a nine degree driver to me. That launched like a 10 and a half degree. Maybe there is something to this hot launch. Club head speed was 101, ball speed 147, smash again 1.45, estimated carry 235. The rough now, they've cut it so it really comes in on the angle that I like to be at, and I, that may be in the rough. That might hurt us a little bit on distance, but it's gonna be interesting to see one way or the other. Woo, shot three. Oh my gosh, that's the best of the bunch. That's definitely going to hit fairway, so we're going to get a really good taste of what this thing can do. Club head speed was 100, ball speed was 145, the smash was 1.44, the estimated carry 231. When you've got a more budget driver offering, you're going to have to give up a few things. There's going to be some sacrifices. So the sacrifice here with this driver is that at 9 degrees, I was a little worried 
that it would launch too low for me. I'm normally 10 and a half degrees is where I have my driver at, and there's no adjustability in this hosel. With most big name manufacturers, you're gonna have an adjustable hosel where you can move the loft up or down a degree and a half, maybe even two degrees in some cases. So I was a little worried, but I gotta say, when I saw those balls coming off the club face, especially shot two and three there, that was really impressive, the peak height that it seemed to get. So the shaft combination here is a shaft I've never played, but coupled with the hot launch technology of this driver, there could be something to this in terms of it really launching nice and high. All right, here's our balls we're coming up on. Let's see where they finished. So first one over here on the left, second one is in the rough, third one pretty much dead middle here on a very narrow fairway. Oh boy, I like that number. At this time of day, I really like that number because I know there's a ball that's a lot further than that too. But 262, that was my first swing. Oh yeah. Whew. There's no wind behind me. It's a completely flat wind day right now, at least right now. Things change quickly in Florida, but right now it's flat. Here we go. The sun literally just came out here as we're coming up to this ball at 264. Shot two. Now we are in the rough, so we lost a little bit of rollout, but this ball looked very similar in trajectory and it caught the fairway so wow on oh my goodness at this time in the morning you've got to be kidding me right now we're at 280 280 i only see numbers like that in the afternoon guys that is that's shocking that's shocking there's nothing else i can say i'm a kind of at a loss for words did not expect that did not expect that at all, but that ball seems to fly off the club face. The smash factor was nice and high there. Wow, 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 wow is all I can say. Let's go to test number two. All right, that was exciting. So test two coming here. Oh my goodness. I just cannot believe, I cannot believe the peak height I'm getting. Smash factor. Way up there again. Clubhead speed 98, ball speed 143, smash 1.46, and the estimated carry 226. How about that? Oh, this, right now I feel like this driver can do no wrong. And uh, I was a little worried about this shaft, this ascent from Aldea. And uh, boy, it's putting my worries to bed very quickly. Shot two. Oh, I, <laughs> I pulled it and luckily it was high enough to clear that tree. That's gonna catch the rough, may even be in a bunker. Clubhead speed 98, ball speed 142, smash 144, estimated carry 223. Hit that one a little bit more heel side, by the way. Third and final shot on this hole. Oh my gosh. I could stop the review right now because what I'm seeing is shocking for this price point. Absolutely shocking. Clubhead 101, ball speed 143, smash 1.42, estimated carry 227. But I can tell you right now, looking at that one, it's going to be longer. When I saw this driver, I saw the lack of adjustability. I saw the really cheap looking head cover that comes with this thing. And it's really bad material, really bad. Change it for a left play through head cover is my advice. I thought I was not, I kind of put the review off a week because I was like, I don't know if I want to test this club. Oh my God, I'm so happy I came out and tested this club. That's why I love doing this show because I love to be surprised. Last week, I was surprised when I thought these irons were gonna be really good and I actually hated them. And this week, I thought I was gonna hate this driver and I am absolutely loving it. So thank you Tor Edge for changing my mind on the Tor Edge regular series, not the Tor Edge exotics. I thought they reserved all the good stuff for the exotics, but man, <laughs> this driver is, it's a special one. Now, we did find a bunker here. And this one's not gonna have gone as far because of that, 226. That was a heel shot. So we have to continue to test forgiveness of this club, but still distance wise, heel shot into the bunker, not bad, but wow. These things up here look pretty darn good, let me tell you. And uh, I could throw a blanket over them. Look at this, look how close these are. These are within two yards of each other. Here we are at 256. I believe that was the third one. And this should have been the fourth one. 
Well, look at that, only one yard apart. Oh yeah, it was two yards like I thought. 258, how about that? Not as big as the 280 shot, <laughs> but um, just so you know, this fairway actually rises a little bit, and so it's just not gonna get really any rollout. So, great numbers, middle of the fairway, right next to each other, so consistency looking really good with this driver as well. We got some more things to test here before we rank these clubs officially. Let's do that next. Next test here, I'm gonna be testing workability. I'm gonna to try to shape my shots a little bit from left to right, goes against my natural shot shape. And let's see how this one performs now. Most times drivers that are really forgiving, they don't move left and right as much. That's the trade-off. So we'll also have a little idea of forgiveness here from this as well. Shot one. Woo I'd say dead straight. I kind of aimed left, hoping it was gonna curve into the right, and it did not do that. Well, I'll tell you what, that club head speed was 98, ball speed was 143, the smash again, 145. Estimated carry, 226. Can't complain with the numbers and the feel of this club. Again, incredible. Let's see if we can move that ball, though. There we go, we got a little bit. I started it, that one a little bit more central on the fairway, and it ended in the right rough. I really had to exaggerate that though and take a serious outside to in swing path on that one. Club head speed 97, ball speed 138, the smash 1.42. Again, a good number. Estimated carry there 213, a fade shot going to be a little weaker than the draw. One more. And that was pretty much again dead straight. So I see this probably going to be a very forgiving driver, not such a workable driver. And again, we saw that with uh, the Mizuno I tested last week that's not a bad thing necessarily you like balls that go straight club head speed 98 ball speed 141 smash 1.43 estimated carry 221 now don't get scared off by the lack of workability because listen this is not a tour driver they've got the tour edge exotics for the tour level clubs this is a driver where you want max forgiveness and that's what you're getting out of this thing and that smash factor number tells me that this driver consistently generates serious ball speed. That is something we all need. We need distance. We need a straight driver. At this price point, this driver is doing it better than I've seen in a very, very long time. I want to test, I'm hoping to test at least, forgiveness, okay? So we know this driver has some distance, but is it forgiving? And so I'm going to do my best. Probably will come easy, honestly, if I'm being honest. I'm going to do my best to hit this on places other than the center of the club face and see what we do. That one was off the toe there. And it's peeling right back into the center of the fairway. I think we're gonna lose a little bit of distance, but the smash factor number, it still looks great. Club and speed 98, ball speed 140, smash 143, estimated carry 219. So that number is a little lower, but great result in the center of the fairway. One more here. I'm gonna see if I can hit it more towards the heel this time. And I think I've done that. I got a nice high launch, but I did push it off to the right. Club and speed 98, ball speed 139, smash 141, estimated carry 215. Let's go find him. Super impressive to me, at least off that toe hit, just how high the smash factor was. I can't wait to see how far this thing actually flew. Now that other one's gonna be off in the right, but still, again, hit that little heel side and it still just took off, had nice peak height, and seemed to go a long ways high smash factor. So. This driver seems to have just about everything. Let's find out exactly where these balls finished and then I'm gonna rank this club. As you can see here, I'm in the trees. I'm actually near this box. I'm in the dirt, in the hard pan where this thing finished and not a bad result for a heel shot. 235, I'm off the fairway, but I'm actually not off by much and I've actually got a clear shot. As long as I probably played a fade and kept it low under this tree. For a heel strike, not a bad result. Now let's look at our toe strike. Toe strike finished in a great spot. My best drives get down this little hill down there. This didn't quite make the hill, so we lost some distance, but again, hard to argue with 238, middle of the fairway off the toe, staring right down the barrel of that green. In terms of consistency, this is a good one. Now it's time to rank this club. As you know, I rank clubs on five criteria. The first one being distance. 
and I am shocked at how good of distance I got out of a club for $249. Literally more than half the price of some of the drivers that this thing beat out distance-wise. That is insane to me, insane. That's a full five out of five stars, absolutely. In terms of forgiveness, bam, five out of five, no doubt about it in my mind. I just, I can't believe it. The technology has carried from the Tor Edge exotics line filtered down into this Tor Edge line, and they've done a remarkable job. In terms of workability, that's where this club is going to fall short. You're not gonna see this club out on tour. Those guys need to work the ball left and right. Us mere mortals need them to be forgiving and straight. So for me, workability is two, but like I said, I'll take those straight drives every day of the week. When it comes to aesthetics, looks, feel, and sound, I'm gonna give this a very, very strong four out of five, and I did not expect that. The feel of this club is exceptional, and I'm surprised to say that. The sound also, really good, really good, better than the Tor Edge Exotics line, which is wild. And the looks department, really strong for a budget club. Of course, it does lack a little bit of adjustability. That head cover is a little cheap looking and cheap feeling, but replace that head cover, you got a great driver. Four out of five, very strong score for aesthetics. In terms of value, oh, how could I not give this a full five out of five stars? Tor Edge has done it here with a quality to price ratio that I don't think I've seen matched this year, maybe in the last couple of years doing this show. Incredible job, Tor Edge. You've made a fantastic driver that I think most people are gonna pass by on the shelves and that would be a huge mistake. Try this one out for yourself. If that shaft fit is a good fit for you, you could have a weapon on the cheap. I maybe got lucky that that shaft matched my swing perfectly and for a nine degree driver, I just can't believe how high it was launching. But boy, if you're at a golf shop and they've got this to test out, do yourself a favor and try it out. You might be able to save yourself three, $400 off the top brands. This is an incredible product. We've got more to test from this line and I can't wait to do that in an upcoming video. Make sure you're subscribed because we're gonna be looking at the three wood as well as the hybrid. Two clubs, at least for me out on the range that flew high, went straight and look really good. I can't wait to try them out here on course. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you back here next time on another edition of Let's Play Through.